All right, this is going to be a uh, example of using the plugin Easy Code Localization. So first, after the plugin's been installed and you have ImageJ open, you can go to uh, the selection for plugins and this drop-down menu and you find Easy Code Localization. Um, this will open up a window with a number of options, uh, but your first step will be opening your images. So you can do that by dragging them here in ImageJ or you can select File Open um, and we have some test images built in that you can play with. So these are uh, E. coli cells with different fluorescent markers. Um, and you can see here for uh, images for analysis, we've selected reporter one as DAPI, um, reporter two is GFP. And these are the two channels that will be used in quantifying uh, co-localization. And then this is the cell identification input channel. So this is going to be for automated identification of cells. So right now we're using RNA, which uh, will work, but uh, let's just change it to phase. Okay, the uh, next section is alignment and threshold options. So to align images, you check these boxes. Um, the reason this is included is uh, a lot of microscopes have chromatic shifts or they have misalignment of filters or uh, different components that can result in a, a misalignment of different colors and that can change your quantification and co-localization. So uh, you may want to align your images. Um, so uh, these are thresholds used for alignment. Um, there are a bunch of different options. There's actually uh, a manual option right here that can be used that will open up another window. But basically, uh, you want to select uh, thresholds that will um, select your cells. So this depends on uh, the brightness of your signal within the cell. So if you don't have uh, your brightest signal within the cell, uh, or in this case of phase, your darkest signal, um, you won't be able to align them. Um, so uh, the uh, method used for cell identification is a little bit different. Um, that's also going to be uh, the areas that you're going to use for analysis. So these two are just going to be for uh, selecting the cells for alignment, but this one is going to select the areas that you're going to analyze. Um, so uh, you always want to select a threshold that selects your cells. Um, in this case, we're just using default, but to show the thresholds that uh, on our images, you just click this button and it's not going to modify your images. Sometimes it will uh, auto contrast your images, but uh, basically what you want to see is um, does my uh, threshold algorithm actually select my cells? So in this case, we'd say yes. Um, so they're shown in red. To hide it, you can just click this. To preview the alignment, you can actually use this button right here and it will show you so we can see that those images shifted um, and they should be aligned now. And uh, actually the names are changed to show you that you've aligned your images. Um, to reset your images, you just select this button here and your images will go back to their original name and their original alignment. So in the next tab, we have cell filters. So you can see um, this is highlighting the cells that we have selected right now. Um, the first filter is an area filter, uh, and this is based on the number of pixels. So right now we have 0 to uh, infinity, so it's going to be selecting all cells with 0 to infinity pixels. If we want to change this number, we just, let's say we wanted 0 to 600 pixels in our cells, we could type in 0 to 600, and that would um, filter out any cells that did not have that number of pixels. Uh, the next checkbox is watershed segmentation, and that's a built-in uh, segmentation algorithm in image J that uh, can be used to cut uh, non-cells, and that's useful for filtering. Um, and then after that watershed segmentation, we have additional filters. So this is another area filter right now um, that you could put in those same pixel values. But then we have physical properties uh, from image J, uh, and these can be looked up on the image J website. Uh, but you can also filter based on uh, intensity, like the mean uh, fluorescence uh, for channel one in this case. And so uh, this would filter out our DAPI based on that uh, fluorescence. And uh, again, uh, we have a preview button down here that you can select to show you what shells are being selected. So in this case, uh, we're not uh, filtering out anything, but we are doing watershed. So this watershed has cut uh, this cell into two cells, two uh, dividing cells. And um, so on this image, we have a, 
a total number of cells highlighted or circled in yellow. Uh, and then we can also preview that for other images in our stack. Uh, if you want additional filters, you can select this button and it'll open up another window where you can add even more filters. So the goal of this is uh, at the end of it to only select your cells. So um, try different filters uh, based on intensity and physical properties. Um, you only want your cell areas and cells uh, that you want for your analysis in your analysis. The next section we have is uh, the visualization tab. And there's a number of useful tools on here. The first um, section is dedicated to heat maps. And these are basically uh, color palettes that will be applied to your image to help you visualize the uh, localization of signal. Um, so there's a number of ways that you can uh, scale these color palettes. Um, the first is uh, cell, and that will scale images based on uh, the intensity within each individual cell. So uh, the brightest pixel within each cell will be uh, the top uh, color within the uh, heat map, and the lowest intensity pixel will be the bottom uh, color within your heat map, and that's for each individual cell. Um, there's also image and stack uh, scaling, and those scale in, the, in a similar way with uh, the lowest intensity pixel on the image, or highest intensity pixel on the image or stack, uh, scaling to uh, the color palette. And these are useful to compare intensity uh, across images or across stacks, respectively. Um, so there are a number of color maps that you can use uh, uh, within this drop-down menu, but uh, we found that hot and cool are a good place to start because they have multiple colors and uh, easy transitions so you can see uh, the relative uh, signal. So in this case, we're going to show uh, the cell uh, scaling of hot and cool for our channels one and two. We can hit uh, preview to see these images. Um, and here we have a couple examples. So um, this would be for the uh, DAPI channel here. We can see um, that uh, the cells are scaled independently. So the brightest signal in this cell um, and the lowest signal within this cell. And here we have the GFP channel. And again, we can see the brightest intensity and the lowest intensity. Um, and uh, to display uh, the color palette for these, you just go to image, uh, color, and uh, show LUT. And in this case, we can see the brightest is this magenta and black is the uh, darkest signal. So uh, least intensity, most intensity. You can see between this image and this image, uh, these very clearly we can see uh, where the GFP is localized. This can be a little bit more uh, nebulous. Okay, for the next section we have scatter plots, and we can select them here and preview them. And this will select uh, random cells from uh, each of your images within a stack and create a, uh, a scatter plot of intensities. And uh, you can actually see which cell it is within your image, um, and this will uh, be the same selection that's made in uh, tables later on, and or if you uh, output ROIs later, um, these will be the same names. So you can go back and figure out which cell this was. Um, and uh, these are really important in selecting the uh, the correct um, metric for quantifying co-localization. Uh, the next section is uh, metric matrices. Um, so these are a useful tool in a uh, using a variety of thresholds to figure out um, actually uh, with what thresholds you might see different uh, relationships between um, signals. So uh, let's just preview one and I can show it. So we have this value uh, FT here for channel one and channel two. Um, so this is the percentage of pixels that are gonna be selected as above threshold. So this is important um, for some uh, metrics like toss and uh, M1 and M2 manders, 
that uh, depend on a threshold. And for things like PCC or uh, um, Spearmans, um, it's actually going to just uh, calculate those values for pixels above these thresholds. So uh, for PCC, it would only calculate uh, PCC for the top 10% of pixels in this case. Um, so uh, we can output the median or the mean or the mode uh, into these uh, ma matrices. Uh, but let's just take a look at one. So here is one we have for toss. Um, you can see uh, black is when a value can actually cannot be calculated. Um, but uh, for the uh, top 10% of pixels in both channel, um, there's a very blue indicating um, anti-colocalization. Um, and as we uh, go up every 10% of pixels, so in this box, we're actually selecting still the top 10% of uh, channel 2 pixels, but we're selecting the top 20% of channel 1 pixels. And uh, we have channel 1 as DAPI, channel 2 as GFP. Um, we can see it's a little bit less anti-colocalized with um, a little bit uh, lighter blue. And we can see as we select more and more pixels, we lose that anti-colocalization. And unsurprisingly, if we select nearly all pixels, we have um, near-perfect localization because um, near all pixels are selected. Okay, the final section that we have is the analysis tab. And uh, this is actually going to be where you quantify uh, colocalization and you get some outputs that you can run uh, statistics on or look at the values of colocalization for your population of cells or objects. Um, so in this top section here, we have colocalization metrics um, with all your different options here. Um, these are uh, threshold options. So we have uh, all pixels used where available for the uh, metric. If it needs a threshold, then it won't have it. Um, we have Costas' method for thresholding. And then we have uh, FT over here. So this, uh, in this case, um, won't involve any step sizes. So this is actually the uh, top percentage of pixels that you're going to uh, select for being above, uh, above threshold. Um, so for example, if we select um, toss with 10% in each channel, um, 10% is going to be, the t top 10% of pixels will be above threshold for channel one and for channel two. Um, if we select uh, PCC with all, then it's going to uh, cal calculate PCC for all the pixels within cells that we've identified. Um, so uh, in this sub-tab, uh, metrics info, we have uh, information about all of the metrics, um, how to interpret them, uh, and some uh, useful uh, other terms. We have definitions for them. And each um, uh, term or metric that you see is actually a link for more information online to a, uh, a publication that will have a definition or have more background information on it. Okay, coming back to this tab, uh, we also have a average signal to show the average uh, signal for uh, channels in case we want to put that out. Um, and then we have the uh, custom metric. So that corresponds to this custom tab. Um, where uh, right now we have it clicked on run, um, but if you do want to run it, you have to have this selected. Um, and this is uh, basically uh, an array of pixel values stored for each cell, and uh, you can write your own Java code. Um, and since uh, it's using the cell selection that we already have and the filters, this is a convenient way to write your own analysis um, without having to code your complete own plugin. So uh, once you write your code, uh, you can click compile. So here we have an example. Um, and if it uh, succeeds, you'll see succeeded. Um, but if you have a, an error, like a, something wrong with your code, um, and you click uh, compile, you're going to see failed, and you're going to see where the error is within your code. So uh, in this case, let's just uh, run it with our example. Um, there's also this resource button that will take you to a resource for writing code in Java. OK, coming back to this tab, um, we have a few more options that we can select that are um, pretty helpful when looking at populations of cells for uh, metric, uh, metric uh, summaries. Um, so uh, the first one is summary. Um, and basically, this will output uh, um, a useful summary of our different metrics, telling us uh, 
mean, median, the number. Uh, we also have histograms. Um, and then for cell identification, this is uh, actually a, a really important section. We have masks and ROIs. So masks will be images that will show us uh, what we've selected as cells, and ROIs are uh, kind of a special file type for ImageJ where we can see um, what we've selected. Um, so finally, uh, if we want to output all of this, we would click Analyze. So the Analyze button is different than the Preview buttons. It's going to run through all of the selections that we've done on the other tabs. So let's say we also had um, a heat map that we wanted to, to produce, and we also wanted to perform alignment. Then when we click Analyze, um, you can click it on in when you have any tab open. But when we click Analyze, it's going to run through uh, all of the selections that we've made. So in this case, we're analyzing, and we have our outputs. Uh, from our analysis, we have a number of outputs, um, the first being this summary window that we've selected here. Um, and uh, it gives you a good amount of uh, useful information. So it tells us the reporter that we used for channel 1 and channel 2. Um, so these are the images we selected. It tells us our cell identification channel. It tells us the number of cells we've identified for analysis. So let's say you're using a filter or uh, a number of filters and you want to see how many cells you actually have. Um, and it gives us a number of useful statistics like mean, standard deviation, median, and how to interpret uh, these different metric values for uh, co-localization. Um, and this also outputs for uh, the average signal and for your custom metric. So the next useful output that we have is this summary table. So on here we have cells categorized by the image that they're in and uh, given a cell number. So this image one is image one in the stack. Image two would be the second image in a stack, three and four. Um, and we can actually identify particular cells by uh, selecting, we have put the ROI, so this is the ROI manager. And let's say we want to see um, image one, cell one. We can select the ROI for image one, cell one, and we can see that it's this cell right here. Um, similarly, uh, we've output masks, so we can see uh, that image one, cell one, is this area selected here. Um, so that's useful in seeing, did you actually select uh, the correct area for um, analysis? Um, within this summary table, we have uh, all of the values calculated for different metrics for all of the cells um, and different outputs that we selected, like average, um, again, the custom, and these physical parameters like area, this is a pixel number, and uh, uh, different ImageJ physical parameters that we can use for uh, filtering. And uh, another uh, kind of link to this, another useful tool, is uh, the histogram of these metrics. So uh, this is actually a, a window with histograms for all the metrics that we put out. So this is TOS, um, this is PCC, um, and we can see the different options this way. And uh, to actually change the uh, summary, we can, uh, or change the histogram, we can change the number of bins. Um, let's say we want to make it continuous, or we want to make it more discrete. Um, so this is useful to see uh, the summary of these, you know, uh, of these values we've calculated within this table. And. Uh, um, so uh, one particular case that uh, can come up, and it's not an error, is uh, the case of um, NAN. That's not a number. Um, so that can occur in the summary table or within the summary itself. And that typically means that a, a value can't be calculated. So for a metric, it might mean there's no pixels um, in above or below a threshold that it needs. Um, and uh, that will actually change your summary to be not a number for uh, the median, the standard deviation. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean an error. Uh, if that does happen to you, you should probably look at your area. Um, maybe you're selecting a non-cell, or uh, it could be your thresholds aren't uh, suitable, like maybe the FT is too high, or perhaps uh, Costas' method isn't working well for you. Um, so that's uh, basically how to use easy colocalization. And we hope that it's helpful uh, for your analysis and uh, that it can benefit you in your research.